hundred freaking thousand dollars. He wants to see Brian Russell uh, against Michael Jordan. When people take it upon themselves to impersonate a famous basketball player, it's usually pretty harmless. Not much motive behind it other than just to get a few laughs in public. But this incident completely wasted everybody's time. For all this to make sense, and to have you understand what went down, we have to set the stage first. As some of you already know, Michael Jordan and Brian Russell used to have a bit of a rivalry going on. It all started when MJ temporarily retired in 1993, and Russell constantly talked behind his back, running his mouth about how Jordan was overrated. And ever since Michael found out about the things Brian said about him, he made it his personal goal to put the beat down on Russell. The two did not like each other at all, and their feud prolonged for many years. Brian Russell sitting next to me, and I look over to Brian. I said, "Remember this conversation you made in 1994 about but when you? I wish I think I can guard you. I can shut you down. I would love to play against you. Well, you're about to get your chance." <laughs> Believe me, I relished on that point, and from this day forward, if I ever see him in shorts, I'm coming at him. You and Michael on this court, you spot him six, game seven, who wins? On this side. I'll whoop his ass. That's it. Hands down. So you two dead. All that trash talk and hatred these two still had in the tank for one another never really went away. So when fans got word that there was going to be an actual one-on-one -on -one match between Russell and Jordan and that all they had to do was purchase tickets to see it, the excitement went through the roof. It was December 2009. Orem, Utah used to be home to the NBA D-League team, the Utah Flash. And one night, thousands of people jam-packed the McKay Event Center because the owner of the team, Brant Anderson, promised that Michael Jordan would be making an appearance at halftime of the Flash's home opener to play Brian Russell in a one-on-one -on -one game. And the winner would receive $100,000 to go to the charity of their choice. Now that's definitely one way to sell tickets and to get people to show up for your team's home opener. But there was one problem. Jordan never replied to the challenge. He didn't even respond at all. So all of those people had no idea that they were basically there for nothing. Anderson hoped he would agree to show up. But when he realized that it was not going to happen, he decided to take matters into his own hands and make it happen, even if that meant deceiving everyone. You see, some fans were understandably skeptical when they first heard the news that Michael would be showing up at halftime at their D-League team's game to play Russell one-on-one. -on -one. But when they saw a video posted on multiple websites of Jordan actually sitting down and having a meal at one of their local restaurants, the word quickly spread around the area, and it caused thousands of people to go out and buy tickets to the game, as the ticket office was overwhelmed by the massive line of fans waiting to purchase a ticket to what they thought was a Michael Jordan appearance. But little did they know, that video was actually created by the Utah Flash themselves, who just simply hired an actor to dress up like Jordan and asked the manager of the restaurant permission to film there. The owner of the Flash knew that if he were to send a fake Jordan lookalike to roam around town with bodyguards and everything, that would trick people into believing that Jordan was actually there and that the one-on-one -on -one grudge match was legit. And it worked. Those alleged MJ sightings caused a lot of commotion around town. And you have to admit, that fake restaurant video was pretty convincing. Dude, that's freaking Michael Jordan. Did you think he came for that freaking rematch thing? I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask him, dude. No, I'm gonna ask him. Hey, Mr. Jordan, did you Excuse come here me, to sir. play Brian Russell? Excuse me, sir. Sir. Are you here for Brian Excuse Russell? Me, so the night finally arrived. Tons of people showed up to the game, not to watch their D-League team play, but to witness Jordan and Russell go at it. And they even had to bring out extra seats than usual. As halftime was approaching, the excitement in the building was incredible, as Mr. Anderson was in too deep. He knew there was no going back now. He had no idea how those fans, who spent their hard-earned money to be there, would take the news that Jordan wasn't actually in the building like everybody believed. But he 
at least had his Jordan imposter ready to put on a show just in case. And what better way to start the show than to take a page out of the WWE and have a little Undertaker action. That definitely got the crowd going, along with a little montage of sports shows hyping it up. On one, he wants to see Brian Russell uh, against Michael Jordan. And oh, yeah, he got a challenge. I want to challenge him. Dude, I can hardly believe this is for real. When Brian Russell came out to the middle of the court, it got people thinking maybe this thing is actually for real after all. <laughs> Then, suddenly, the iconic Chicago Bulls theme song started playing. And now, ladies and gentlemen, a man who needs no <laughs> Then, finally, out of nowhere, MJ emerges from the shadows with several bodyguards next to him and reveals himself. But everyone quickly realized it wasn't him. Is that who I think it is? I didn't think he was gonna show up. Is that MJ? He showed up like, hey, that's not my, hold on. Oh. He sent an imposter, a buster, a bomb to play me. It was obvious, as soon as they laid eyes on the guy, that it wasn't Jordan, because he was clearly a foot shorter. The crowd was not happy, and certainly made it clear. This is embarrassing right now. This is exactly what everyone knew it was going to be. This is not good. Give me the look of disappointment. <laughs> Everyone's still standing thinking, no. Something's gonna happen. Seriously. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's still gonna happen, right? Come on. Voice your opinion real quick. It's stupid! They tried to get free money! How do you feel right now now that MJ didn't show? You could tell by all their faces that they felt betrayed. And in a sick twist, Russell even knew beforehand that the real MJ was never gonna show up. He was fully aware that they were just getting the people's hopes up, but didn't care, leaving many questioning what was the whole point of all of this. And you know, Anderson, the owner, who was the one who set this whole thing up, received a lot of backlash. He said he was truly sorry for misleading the fans, and that it was just supposed to be for fun, and then offered free tickets to a future Flash game, along with a refund as well to make it up to them. And nowadays, he makes sure he just sticks to making movies from here on out. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed this story about the complete disaster that took place a little over a decade ago. Comment down below if you remember this fiasco. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.